we'll wheel you around then. <laughs>
Don't let anyone, don't come up to me and say, well, I just don't know what I can do. <laughs> Ask God, He'll tell you. If you're His child, He'll tell you. He will. Let's go a little bit further in our text here. In verse 16, or 15, He saith unto them, He's talking to His disciples now, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I kind of like Peter because he's, uh, he was always first to do something. He was always using his mouth when he shouldn't and doing these at times he shouldn't. And Simon Peter answers him, and this verse right here is the key to the gospel. From chapter 1 of Matthew until chapter 16 up to this verse, our Lord is referred to to His his given name, Jesus. It's mentioned 51 times. You say, how do you know I counted them? 51 times is the first time the word Christ has ever been mentioned. Why? In the Hebrew language... That means the Messiah, the Divine One, Divinity. I am God in the flesh. In Philippians chapter 2 and verses 6 through 8, Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in the fashion as a man, humbled himself and became obedient even uh, death even unto the cross. There had to be a human being that is perfect. The blood of bulls and goats and other animals could not, could not take away sin. There had to be a perfect individual. And God says, I'll tell you what, I'm going to come down there, I'm going to give him my son. You say, well, where is love? Look at the cross. He gave us something we don't deserve. I thank God God loves me. And I'm the first one to admit I I have failed Him many, many times. So have you. Don't look at me so pious. Then, in verse 17... To me, this is the first manifestation of the Holy Spirit talking to man. Look what he said. Uh, In verse 17, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Sure, the disciples followed Christ. They watched him perform miracles and everything like that. They said, boy, he's, he's, a, he's something different. I wonder who he is. They didn't know until it was revealed by the Heavenly Father. I'm sure Peter was astonished when he said what he did. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, did that come out of me? Did you ever talk to someone about the Lord or something like this? And it seems as though the Holy Spirit of God just seemed to direct you. Did I say that? I was witnessing to a man on his front porch. And he had the light on and I had my Bible with me and I was talking to him. And he thought, well, I'll tell him what I'm going to do. I'm going to shut the light off so he can't read his Bible and that will shut him up. <clears throat> he shut it off, and I said, Now, Lord, what am I going to do? He says, Don't say anything, Paul. I'll take care of you. And he did. He's still on the throne, and he loves each and every one of you. Does God love me? Sure, he does. You don't know what I've done. He loves you. He loves you. 
And how do I know that? Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. Would you take your Bibles and just turn there for a moment? In fact, I want you to underline this. I like what Brother Forsyth said this morning about you can know that you're saved. Romans chapter 8. I think it's still in here. Oh, yes. And look with me in verse 16. If you're questioning whether you're saved tonight, you shouldn't. Look what it says. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Not going to be, hope to be. You know the whole Spirit of God can tell you. I like that. Because sometimes I get in a situation and I question God. You say, are you confessing things? I don't have my collar on backwards. But I'll tell you one thing. I do when God loves me. And no matter what I do, he's going to take me to heaven because of Jesus Christ, not because of Paul Baker. This book tells it all. Would I like to be living in the days of the Lord? No, I'd like to be there and see what was going on. But I'd rather be today because God has revealed to us all about himself and all about his son and all about us. That's wonderful. The Holy Spirit of God directed Simon Peter, and I got news for you, he'll direct you. How do I know that? Well, in John chapter 14, Jesus said to his disciples, But the Comforter, who is the, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. I never noticed something until, oh, a few weeks ago as I was reading this. Notice what he says in the last part. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. I'm sure Pastor Wise and Pastor Forsyth and, and I have experienced when we were in, in college that 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 uh, I'd, I'd ask some of my uh, brethren, have you studied for that examination? And they would stupidly say, oh no, God's going to give me what I need. <laughs> According to this verse of Scripture, you've got to have something before God can give it to you. That's why I encourage, listen, I heard people brag, I've read, I've read the Bible 60 times. Well, how many times has the Bible been through you? I'd rather somebody know a few verses of Scripture and let God speak to their heart than brag about how much they've read this book. I'm not putting down reading the book. You stay in it. I had a professor that say to, to us preacher boys, he'd say, did you get your marching orders today? I knew exactly what he meant. You say, well, I don't have time to read. How about devotions? Get a good devotion. Do you have, um, oh, I can't think of it now. Forget about it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that's my age. I can get away with it, see. <laughs> have your daily devotions. God will bring that to your mind. God will bring that to your memory. And I like what Pastor Forsyth said this morning about the filling of the Spirit of God, the controlling impulse. Listen. God is not interested about the outside appearance. He's interested about the inside appearance. You know how you can tell you're, you're filled with the Spirit or controlled by the Spirit? Galatians 5. Turn there if you would, please. Galatians chapter 5. This always gets to me because of the fact that I have a big problem with it. I really do. And I think you do too. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 and 23. But the fruit, 
of the Spirit. The fruit is the result of something that is happening. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. I have a big problem with that. Because I fail many, many times. Especially driving. Someone will pull out in front of you in a 50 mile an hour zone and go 35. It burns me up. Or they'll turn a corner real slow. I feel like rolling the window down and say, Why didn't you walk? Now, if I was controlled by the Holy Spirit, I would say, God bless you, brother. I'll help you around the corner. <laughs> How can I be controlled? Listen, folks, do you know what this world is waiting for or looking for? They're looking for someone to love them. Unity Baptist Church, when they go by and say, hey, that, that name fits that church. That's what we need. What I'm going to say, I hope you don't get angry with me, but I have come to know, come to learn that denominationalism has hurt the gospel of Christ more than anything else. What are you? Well, I'm a Methodist, or I'm a Presbyterian, or I'm a Baptist. What's the matter with saying I'm a Christian? Oh, oh, we can't say that. <laughs> you might offend somebody. Go ahead. Jesus offended a lot of them. He called the Pharisees, he called the Pharisees a bunch of hypocrites. <laughs> Our churches are full of them. Who do men think that I am? Now the next one, verse 18, is very controversial. And he said, And I say unto thee, thou art Peter. In the Greek that means Petros. It means a small pebble. Or Petra. And upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When he spoke of the rock, he spoke of himself. Christ is not building the church on Peter or any other man. He's building it on the statement made in verse 16, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what He's building this church on. If He isn't, you might as well close the doors. I'm sorry our Catholic friends say that they're building it on Peter. No. God's got more sense than that. He's got more sense than that. In Isaiah 28, 16, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. He's talking about Christ. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6, Wherefore also it is contained in the Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. The reason people are confused today is they don't have the Holy Spirit to direct them. I encourage each and every one of you to study the Word of God. Take time out. You young people, God can use you. Boy, it's good to see those young people there tonight. What'd you feed them? You promise to eat? I'm, I'm glad tonight that we know Christ is our personal Savior. People say, well, I believe. May I ask a question? What do you believe? You go to an airport, you get on one of these great big planes, and you say, how in the world are they going to get this thing off the ground? And out walks a man in a uniform, and he's got captain stripes on and everything, and someone says, that's a pilot. I say, do you believe that? I say, yeah, I believe it. Do I really believe it? No, I, I believe it because he's got a uniform on. 
That doesn't make him a pilot. I can put a uniform on, but don't want, do you want to fly a plane with me? I won't be able to get it off the ground. When will I start believing when he proves to me he gets in the cockpit, taxis out, and takes off? Guess who I'm going to believe in? That guy in the cockpit. You know what? This book said Jesus died for us. I believe it. He's proven it through His precious Word. The Holy Spirit of God backs this up. And he said, I'll, I'll build my church. I thought this morning, Brother Forsyth was going to see a part of my message. I was going to say, don't say anything. <laughs> no, you know what? This is a beautiful building here. But this isn't the church. You don't come to church. You bring it. I pastored a church up in Mifflinburg, Pennsylvania. That's in the Susquehanna Valley. And the Amish are very strong up there. And they don't call their building where they worship a church. They call it the meeting house. And they're right. It's a meeting house. We come here to rejoice and serve the Lord. Do you know, you ladies that do dishes and everything like that in the house and everything, you worship God. You're always in His presence. Always. Sometimes we don't think that. When we do something wrong or we say something we shouldn't have, we wonder, what does God say? Hey, <clears throat> I'm glad First John 1 John 1.9 is in there. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I like that. I kind of wear that verse of Scripture out. All of us do? Amen? Sure we do. And then the devil gets in and he says, hey, if you were a Christian, you wouldn't do something like that. i got news for you. We are Christians and we do things like that. We've got a battle going on inside. Don't you ever think you don't. Most of you knew that I was a professional entertainer years ago. I was a professional drummer. And I still like them. I'm not going to play them in church now. Don't get me wrong. And I have a desire. I still like them. I still like to hear a good drummer. I mean, I don't go to a nightclub to hear them. I got a computer. I listen to them. <laughs> Well, let's pray. <laughs> okay, so I have the life story of Gene Krupa. So what? Condemn me. Come on. <laughs> I like the foundation in verse 18. It's based upon the Lord Jesus Christ. I like a church like that. You can call it anything. You can put a tag out there on the marquee, anything you want. It isn't what's on the marquee, it's what's inside. It's your heart. You hear this many times from preachers and from everything else, everybody else. What is the heart? And they'll point to this. That does nothing but thub dub your blood, that's all. The word for heart mentioned in the Bible is not referring to the biological organ that pumps the blood. Rather, it refers to the mental and moral activity of man. It is that part of us that constitutes the seed of our intellect, emotion, and will. Therefore, the heart is the center of everything that makes us who we are and that determines our thinking, choosing, feeling, and doing. Now, there's a verse of Scripture that comes alive. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You know what it is? Our thinking is changed to the things of God. We want to do the things of God. This is what, if we don't, guess what? And I say this very uh, meekly, the holy hound dog of heaven won't let you go. Won't let you go. 
How do you know you're saved? Thank God for the Holy Spirit. He convicts, converts, and con conceals us in Christ. Notice something else here in verse 18. Or verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Every one of us here tonight have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What is that? The gospel. Would you do a favor for me? I found out something down through the years after talking to many people in their homes. They have been offended by zealous Christians. What do I mean by that? Condemning them to hell. I found out one thing. You win them to you and you win them to the Lord. You don't, know, you don't know what influence you have on others. You have influence on your children. And, 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 and kids at school, guess what? You're an influence to someone. Don't ever think that you're not important. You are important. Every one of you are important in God's eyes. He loves you just as, as much as you were the only person on the face of this earth. And He wants to take care of you if you'll let Him. I'm, let me put it this way, not you, we. The most problem I have is not with God, it's with me. And then in verse 19, in, in uh, Oh, and then he says here in uh, the last of verse 19, Whatsoever shall be bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Anything that we do here that glorifies the Lord is bound in heaven, is okayed in heaven. Anything that isn't is not accepted in heaven. Do we fail many times? Sure we do. But what I'm trying to tell you folks, don't think because you make a, you, you sin or do something wrong that God hates you. You broke His heart. But you know what? He still loves you. Many Christians have been discouraged and defeated because they've been pushed down and they've been run over the coals by someone that said, Oh, God doesn't love you anymore. Would you please give me a chapter, book, and verse? Just look at Calvary. Just look at Calvary. And verse 20. Then he charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he, that he was Jesus the Christ. Uh-oh. Mm. I thought that's what he came for. To tell us why he, why he came. And he tells his disciples, I didn't say it, he did. He said, don't you go and tell others that I am the Christ. Now why? Bible scholars tell us this. It wasn't Jesus' time to pay the price. And the Jews, if they found out that he was God in the flesh, they would have crucified him or killed him before his time. God's got a time schedule. And he's still on it. I'd like for him to come tonight, wouldn't you? Well, I, I'll tell you one thing, that'd be something. Whew. If he comes tonight, and the way things look, it's not going to be long. You better pack up because we're going up soon. Because Christ is coming to get his bride. I don't look like, much like a bride, neither do you. But you know what? When we see Jesus, it'll be worth it all. When we look at his darling face, we will rejoice. We'll know everything then. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. These poor people think God is dead. They are dead. 
They're just, someone needs to bury them. That's what the problem is. God isn't dead. He's living. He's living. I've seen him answer, answer prayer. He gave me my precious wife. I prayed. I said, Lord, would you supply a mate for me? And he did. I don't want any woman. I want one you want me to have. And the requirement is, number one, she has to be saved. Guess who God did? <laughs> it's just like him do something like that. He gave me what I wanted. You know what? He'll give you what you want if you ask him. You say, well, I've asked him for a million dollars. He hasn't given it to me yet. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> ask him for ten, he'll probably give it to you. <laughs> He's on the throne. I've never seen him fail. Never. He speaks to us four different ways. Through his word. Through others. Through circumstances. And through unanswered prayer. As I look back, if God would have answered some of the prayers that I asked him, I'd have been in trouble. We can't see that when we pray. But I've got news for you. Down the road, he says, see? And all we can say is, praise his holy name. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Shall we pray? Father, thank you tonight for your love. Thank you tonight that we know, we know, who you are. We know what you did for us who deserve nothing. And I pray that you continue to bless this gracious church that you've raised up. I pray that you'll strengthen the people. I pray that your name will be glorified. And pray that many souls will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And may what's done be done for you and you alone. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.